All right, people, these next couple of mnemonics are to help you remember uh, the trauma assessment in the emergency department of uh, patients that are presenting. So I'm really excited about this one because I, while I have not worked in an emergency department, I, one of our nurses on staff has, and she gave me this awesome mnemonic and with great detail. So I'm going to go ahead and explain that to you. So these are, this is what you want to go through when you have a patient present with you know, with trauma, whatever that may be. And this is so you remember kind of the things that you want to make sure that you're assessing. And and how the, it's really important that you're doing this quickly and efficiently in, in addressing the most important stuff first. And once that stuff is addressed, then you can work down to stuff that's not as essential. But the assessment of these patients, every second counts. Um, you have to make sure you're fully assessing them appropriately to know what their needs are and then how to rank them in a situation. So so the mnemonic is actually just A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I. So we're, I'll go through what each of those are, but it's just some the letters of the alphabet up to I. So A stands for alertness and airway. So you want to check their airway while you're holding C-spine. You're checking for a tongue obstruction, maybe some missing teeth, blood vomit secretions, any odd breath sounds that are obvious, uh, snoring, gurgling, that kind of stuff. So that's your A, alertness and airway. The second one, B, is breathing. You want to note their depth, their rate, their pattern. Is it symmetrical? Is one side going up and down and the other is not? Or are they belly breathing or something like that? Note their lung sounds and how hard they're working to breathe. That's really important to know. Are they struggling to get breaths in? The next one, C, circulation. You're checking their pulses. That's absolutely essential. Um, checking for any obvious bleeding, uh, obvious big issues with skin, and throwing in some IVs. D, disability. So we're checking their their GCS, their coma scale, checking their pupils to see if we have this obvious large neuro deficit. E, it's um, a couple things. So expose and assess for more bleeding. Expose, you could think, um, expose or examine for more bleeding. You want to make sure you're looking at every inch of their skin to make sure that they don't have bleeding or some stab wound or some laceration or something maybe you know in an armpit or something like that you want to expose everywhere to assess signs of bleeding and then environment you want to keep them warm your f is two things as well so a full set of vitals and family so checking to make sure all of their vital aspects are stable and that their family if they're here um we know where they are, if they need any update, um, but that kind of stuff, and they, they're where they need to be, and know, hey, we're gonna, we'll, we'll get to you as soon as we, we can, but this is where they are, and, and know their relation, and that kind of thing. Um, G, get resuscitation adjuncts, so things we need to know, labs, we need to put them on the monitor. Do they need an NG tube or an OG tube? Do they need some supplemental oxygen? Are they in excruciating pain? Those kind of things. Um, and then our H is our head to toe assessment and a history if we really can get one, if, if they're conscious um, or if there's someone there that can provide us for a situation or what happened, but your head to toe assessment. So that's different from E because you're just exposing with E, exposing to examine, checking everything out, but this is an actual head to toe assessment, head to toe assessment. And then um, history, um, you want to know what happened, any serious injuries, um, signs and symptoms of things, that kind of stuff. So if you can get a history and then I inspect the back, you want to make sure you're taking a look at their back and actually turning the patient over. It doesn't matter how big they are. You better get some of your big, pa your heavy lifting coworkers over to your patient so you can turn them over. There's no reason that you should not look at their back unless specifically told by the physician. But there's very um, few situations that if you're doing them in correct C-spine that you can't look at their back. Um, so that's kind of the main thing of the triage of the patient where you're taking a look at everything in a very systematic way. And it took me a while to explain, but 
if you're moving really quickly and efficiently, you can knock this out. You know, hey, are you alert? Are you are they alert? Are they awake? I'm holding their airway open with the C spine. I'm noting their breathing. I'm checking their pulses and their circulation. Um, doing a quick GCS, shining a light in their eyes and their pupils, exposing their skin. Um, checking for bleeding. I'm getting a full set of vitals, um, assessing the family situation. I'm getting all of the recess adjuncts, doing my head to toe and inspecting the back. And typically, typically, not every single time, but there's multiple nurses in there helping you complete this so it can be done as quickly as possible. So that's really important information to know. All right, and then I have another... Um, mnemonic to help you with this. So that was the A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H for your trauma assessment. But I also have one after you get that assessal, uh, um, excuse me, after you get that initial assessment completed, then you can, and, and situate it in they're okay or they're stable or they're okay for, where, to a point where you can kind of dig farther into what's going on. Um, this mnemonic is ample, A, M, P, L, E, Allergies, medications, past medical history, last meal, events surrounding injury. And this is particularly essential for patients, trauma patients that are going to surgery. We've got to know their allergies, um, so we're not giving them any medications they're allergic to, their medications, what did they take, when did they take it, um, pertinent past medical history, especially stuff that could really impact um, the surgery. Last meal, as you can imagine, with surgery is very um, essential because if they just ate a huge meal and we're looking at surgery, we've got to weigh risk versus benefit. Um, should we wait or is this serious enough where we need to go? Um, and then the um, events surrounding the injury to best prepare the surgeon and the physicians so they know how, you know, how to address the situation the best as possible. So those, the A, B, C, D, E, F, G, and AMPLE, A, M, P, L, E, those are ways to help you remember how to um, assess things in order of importance with your trauma patients. This has been another episode of the Nursing Mnemonics Podcast by NRSNG.com with your host, Katie Kleber, RN, CCRN. To grab all of our nursing cheat sheets, head over to NRSNG.com slash freebies. That's NRSNG.com slash freebies. Thank you so much for being here today. We love you guys. We thank you so much. We want to see you guys succeed. Listen, we're all in this together. Now go out and be your best self today. Happy nursing.